All right, continuing in the security theme, we have another approach um, from Felipe. All right, thank you. Well, uh, yeah, my, name is my name is Philippe. Um, I work for ARM in the open source software group. Uh, more specifically, I'm part of this new team, which used to be robotics, uh, but now we have a bit more focus on the automotive area. So today's presentation is going to be about a new project, uh, which is called the LibDDSSEC. And uh, the goal is to move all the security implementation. So everything you have seen on the previous presentation, we want to move all that um, uh, implementation into ARM Trusted Zone, which I'm going to explain what it is. Um, so I'm going to start with some, some key concepts uh, between DDS and also ARM Trusted Zone. I'm going to probably go quite quickly on the DDS because it was explained already. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the project itself, what's the current state, and how we are trying to, to implement it. Right, so well, I, I imagine that everyone knows about uh, this type of diagram, but it's just for completeness. Uh, what we are trying to, to accomplish here is to protect the communication between the nodes within a DDS uh, domain. Uh, so our work is more specific to ROS2 in this case. Um, again, previous, uh, previous presentation I already explained this, but uh, just uh, to give you an idea, the DDS uh, specification is, is quite actually a lot, there is a lot of specification, there is a, a collection of um, specifications. Uh, the main ones that uh, have a relationship with the work we are doing is the DDS I or TPS, which, talk, which uh, uh, talks about the, the low level, um, it, how, how the frames are, are packed and, and how it's transmitted on the wire. Uh, then the DDS uh, high-level specification, which gives the, the, uh, the information how, how the, the, the data is communicated. And finally, the main specification for us is the DDS security. And that gives all the details about the model and the plugin interface. Um, so the, there are uh, a few uh, things that the DDS security tries to, to, to protect. So very quickly going through them, confidentiality, which is about uh, make sure that uh, two nodes can communicate and no one can know what is going uh, under that transmission. Uh, integrity, so you know that what you receive is not corrupted. Authentication, where you can have a node uh, to say who it is and you can trust that. Authorization, so after you have the nodes, you can say which node is allowed to do what in terms of publishing data or, or receiving data. Uh, message data in orgy, so again, it, it deals with authentication, so you know where it's coming from, the information that you're receiving, and finally, the non-repudiation of data, which means after a node has uh, sent that information, you know that it cannot lie about it. It, it has sent it. You cannot go back and, and say it hasn't. Um, so the DDS security specification has quite a nice chapter about the threat model. So they talk about these four items, and uh, there are very nice description diagrams and how it works. So this is just more for reference if you want to, to see it into more details. Um, so going down uh, into the implementation layer, there are five plugins. That's how it's uh, uh, approached in the specification. For our work, we have been mainly focusing on these three ones, which is authentication, the cryptography, and the access control. Though access control, we haven't yet uh, started the implementation it. Right. Um, just a few more details. Uh, the DDS specification actually gives you, a f it pinpoints how the, the communication needs to be, which algorithm needs to be used, but it, it has some options at some extent, actually. Uh, for us, we have been uh, approaching to more or less on these two items. So all the asymmetric key cryptography is just used for discovery, authentication, and, and the creation of the shared uh, secret. And uh, the other uh, information is that the, the use of ciphers, the HMAC, or digital signatures, it's, it acts on a top level. Again, how it was explained in the previous presentation. OK, that was uh, the, the quick overview of the DDS nodes and security. Uh, so I'm going through, going through the ARM um, Trusted Zone. Uh, I, I don't know how, how many people know about the Trust Zone. 
answer song. Okay, not that many, which is fine because I got diagrams about it. Uh, the, yeah, the, the the one phrase description is that uh, trust zone is a uh, it's a built-in technology inside the CPU, which pretty much creates uh, two virtual environments, and you can have two completely independent software stack running on it. It's it's quite generic in terms of uh, which are these two software stack, but Conceptually, you always consider that one of them is secure and the other one is non-secure, but it's just a concept. It's pretty much just two words uh, executing apart. The main, um, the main way that, that uh, is accomplished by the physical address is, is kind of split. You can say which, which range of the physical address is uh, uh, attached to a, one of the two words. Um, and the, the security and non-security is completely orthogonal in terms of the privilege, privileged levels, which I'm going to explain in a minute. Right. Um, so, in terms of trust, it's security. It's all about who you trust on, on, on the system, right? So, it used to be as simple as this diagram. So, you, you have many reasons to have OS, but one of them is it's about the isolation. You have multiple applications running on top of the operating system, and uh, you know that uh, between two applications they are not going to clash because the operating system is doing the isolation. So you, uh, in this point of view, you kind of you trust on the OS doing that, that level of isolation. Um, more recently, we have something more like this, where, for example, if you are renting a, a server um, on the cloud, you might don't trust to run your application together with another application from a different company, even though you might trust on the OS. So, more recently, we have the hypervisor, which does another layer of, uh, of isolation. So you can have your own OS and your own application, and you, but you still need to trust that the hypervisor is doing the, the isolation. Now, you could do some security as aspects using this topology, but uh, that's where we get uh, to the trust zone. So on ARM CPUs, you have another layer, and uh, so the EL means execution level, it's just a privilege level. And, um, okay, so during the boot sequence, what happens here is that uh, you always start, the, the ARM specification says, you always start on the highest level of the execution level. <coughs> execution level. So the EL3 is always secure, where all the other execution levels have secure and non-secure sides. The EL2 is not showing the secure side, but that was added just a few months ago, so there is a EL2 secure now, actually, which I'm um, uh, just released uh, as an extension to the CPUs. So during the boot sequence, usually you are going to boot into the EL3 mode, and that's considered the secure mode. Uh, so you usually are going to have like a ROM into the system. That ROM is going to uh, to load the, the remaining, the, the further image, so that's going to be, for example, the trusted OS. So it loads, it verifies that it's really a valid image. It has internal keys to, to make sure it's uh, valid, and it knows that it's the cheap vendor that uh, signed that, um, that image, and then it can load the trusted applications on top of that. Once it has done that, then it loads the non-secure world, which can be just like Linux or Windows, and they can now coexist in parallel. Every time you want to do to invoke a service on the trusted application, you need to go all the way down to EL3, so like using system calls, etc. So you keep escalating the exception levels, and you move to the trusted application, you execute what you need to execute, and you go back to where you came from. So that's how it gets isolated. Um, so for us, our environment, you have, uh, if you have notes, it's the names that change. So the EL3, we have trusted firmware a, which is a trusted firmware for application um, CPUs, and we are using the OPTOS, which is a, one of the implementations of trusted OS. It's an open source one. I think I'm running a bit late, actually. <laughs> so very quickly, the, 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 the libd-desk uh, project is trying to move everything from the, the secure, the non-secure side into the secure, all the, all the security operations. Uh, and that means all the certification, uh, certificates, uh, management, all the key generation, and all the security operations. Uh, the main goal is to just to limit the source face attack, and more specifically, we want all the keys to be only in the security, and there is no way to, for them to be leaked. Uh, so this is a typical implementation of uh, IDDS. We are using uh, 
faster TPS our, as our environment for, for testing. And usually they use um, another library like the OpenSSL. And all the certificates, all the configurations are in the non secure world. Our first proof of concept has been um, something like this. So we just remove the OpenSSL layer and we create our own API. And there is a backend which then invokes this trusted application. And everything is on the top uh, uh, right side. All the execution happens that TA. That was the initial proof of concept. So now it's become yeah, a proper library. So it's outside the DDS implementation. And uh, that's how we are trying to do it right now. Um, so just two minutes more then. Uh, the next step is, we still have problems with this topology where the, the, the green arrows going down, they might be very specific to a given implementation. So what we are looking to is to move even the plugins inside this library. So what we can do is just instantiate the plugins itself in the library and just attach to the DDS according to the DDS specification. Um, I'm just going to skip this one. That's the current work. We're trying to, to move now things from the from the proof of concept into the pure library. Um, main challenge, so the latency might be one of the main challenges we are going to face. We are trying to, um, it, it's, it's always a trade-off, so that's something we need to, to make sure it's going to be worth doing. Uh, we still have a problem where vulnerability on the non-secure side might allow things to say, to, to use the, the secure content, but at least it cannot leak the keys. That's, that's the main idea. Um, skip the future works. Um, so this is going to be open source. We are trying to push this to GitHub uh, very soon, as soon as we, we have it available. Uh, it's going to be mainly a BSD project written C and C++. Um, final slide, I promise. <laughs> it's the, well, the reason we are doing this is because we are focusing maybe on the automotive area. And as you have seen today, there's quite a lot of automotive projects using DDS and also ROMs too. That's it.